Amen. Will you find your way back to your seats? We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Before we do, we've got a few announcements. This Sunday, after service, there will be a, a dinner, and the proceeds will be going to help the youth with NAYC. Um, if you haven't gotten with Brother Cooper or Sister Katie and Brother Thomas DeRoos, they are trying to get people to bring things in. So if you're a young person and you haven't really seen the list yet, uh, just get with them. And that will be this Sunday after at the uh, morning service. And also, um, there will be youth. There will be a Bible study this Friday for the youth upstairs, kind of where we've been doing prayer meeting. So if you can come, you want to come, um, we'll be here at 7.30 on Friday, this Friday night. Um, also, for all the young people, the 28th and the 29th of this month is going to be a two-day thing. It's going to be worth the wait. We're going to be staying the night Friday night. If you can, parents, if you can get your kids for anything, I'll try to get them here for worth the wait. It's going to be worth it. <laughs> Good. It's going to be worth it. I think it's a really important session, series, especially for our young people at this time. It's about purity and keeping ourselves. And I ask that you just, if you can, help your kids get here for that two-day thing. We're going to be staying the night. Even if they don't want to stay the night, just make sure they're here for worth the wait. Our pastor's going to be teaching it. I feel like it's important, and it's going to be a good thing for our young people. And that's the 28th and 29th of this month. And I think that's all the announcements I've got coming up. We're going to have Sister Van to come at this time and do prayer and lead us in prayer this evening. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. How many of you are thankful to be in the house of God on a Wednesday night? Amen. You have a bad day at work today? You're about to have a good evening. A um, few prayer requests. Um, let's remember Travis Lafoon. I know that um, I got a phone call, a text. I got some kind of form of communication today. He is having some pain in his back. Let's remember him. Um, Sister Judy Whiteman is here, but you called me, and I'm sorry I missed your call. Um, when your husband's out of town and you have three kids running all over the place, um, sometimes you miss some of those calls. So I apologize for that, but if you have a need, let's remember her. Um, I know she is, I'm glad she's here because Sunday she had to go to the hospital um, with some heart issues, but we prayed for her in the foyer. And God touched her. Um, I know that she's still having some problems, but we all know that we have a prayer answer in God that will Amen. go ahead and continue taking care of that situation. Um, there are needs that we have all over this church if we lift our hands. I know that God will hear our hearts and hear every request that we have. And any request that is in my mind, that is in the back of my mind, that is not coming forward right now. I know that you all know the needs that we have in this church. And uh, God certainly knows them, and he's going to touch you every one of them. Um, I do have um, a request that someone had brought to me today that's pretty serious that I want us all to remember. You know, nobody can tell me that God's not a prayer answering God because I know it. I've experienced it. You guys have experienced And my faith is high, so not much can tell me that not anyone really can tell me that God won't answer our prayers because I know that he can. Um, God has still continued touching me with the situation that I was going through, with the issue that I dramaed about. That's probably not even a word. Um, God is still touching me. I still am not having any problems with that. Um, and uh, still, still delivered from that. And I do believe that God completely healed me. I'm very thankful. Um, you know, every day when you wake up and you're nervous when you have to do your daily things that you do through life and you're just like, what's it going to be this time? And cringing every time that you, you know, have to go and check and make sure everything's okay and, and I don't have, I don't have to do that anymore and I'm, you know, every time I do that thing that, you know, you have to do every single day, I'm thankful. It's a, it's a thankful time in my life and that's kind of weird, but for me, it's a thankful time. It's a thankful praise. Um, but there is a situation that is pretty serious that I do really want us to take before the Lord. Um, there's a family in California. They're, they look very young. And I'm young, but they look younger than me. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but they did look very young. Uh, it's called, their name is the Woods Family, and he pastors in California. They have, I think it's four kids, and I lost my piece of paper. It was stuck on my purse, and I don't know where it is. So if you see it in the parking lot, take it with you and pray for him. Um, the husband was driving in a vehicle, I think it was a truck, in front of his wife and his children. And she um, was expecting a child, and she had all of her children in the car with her. Um, and uh, it looked like she was in a van. I did see a picture, and it looked like it was tipped over on its side. Um, she got in a very horrible accident. I don't know what happened, but somehow her car was tipped over. Um, 
all of the children are in very serious. They're all, all the children were hurt. She is in stable condition, but critical condition still. But she is stable, so that's good. However, she did lose her child that she was expecting. And the two-year-old, from what Facebook said and from what I heard, uh, the two-year-old that she had, which was her youngest child, was brain dead. So um, I don't know the ages of her children, and I don't know that it really matters. God touches us no matter what our age is. But um, it's a pretty serious thing just to lose your child that you're carrying, as some of us know that. Um, but to know that your child is brain dead, I know we all know that that's a pretty serious thing. But we also all know that God can change results and he can heal that child. And as well as heal her and the other children. I wanted to really remember them in prayer. The husband was driving in front of them. I don't think he was involved in the accident. However, he did witness it. And we all know that that is obviously a traumatic thing to have to go through. Um, let's remember them. Let's also remember their church family in prayer because you know it's impacting them too. Um, I have given you guys a lot of victory report. Also, one more thing is remember Bryson, my nephew. He um, had to go to the emergency room Easter night. He had a very bad ear infection. And um, so they said, you're lucky you got in here because if you know, your eardrum can burst with ear infections. And they said, you're lucky you got in here quick enough. So I'm thankful God touched him. But do remember him in your prayers because I'm sure he's a fussy little baby. Um, I do have a report. My sister Shelly, my oldest sister, who I love so very much, had um, sent us a text message the other day and said that they had found um, some, um, she had went to the doctor and they found some uh, lumps and some masses um, in her body and uh, they wanted to do some more testing and, and uh, find out exactly what they were. So she, um, of course, anytime you hear that about your family, you get nervous and you go to prayer. Um, we did pray for her. I prayed for her a lot. I love her so much. And um, she sent us a text today, and they did diagnose her with something, and she does have them, um, but they are non-cancerous, and they said um, they want to see her back in six months to make sure that they have not grown. If they do, they'll have to do biopsies of it, but the fact that God has touched her enough for them not to have cancer, I am so thankful, and I'm telling you, through everything that I've told you tonight, I know that my God is a prayer answering God, and I know that when Shelly goes back to the doctor in six months, that they're not going to be larger, they're not going to have to do any biopsies, and that God is going to heal her completely and take care of that situation. Amen? So tonight, each and every request that we have, and um, the ones that I've brought to you, to you we're going to go to God in prayer, and we're going to believe that he's going to touch um, every situation. Remember to pray for our pastor. He is in Louisiana, Brother John Chris. Jonathan Chris' is, um, um, services that he has every year. Uh, fortunately, I didn't get to go with him this year. I figured... 16, 18 hours was maybe a little bit too more driving time because y'all know it would have been like 24 hours if I'd have been riding in the car with him. So uh, I stayed home with my kiddos. So pray for uh, Pastor as he's down there with Jordan. Um, I'm just joking. I love Jordan. <laughs> he's very thankful that Jordan was with him to help him drive. But let's pray for him because I know he misses being here. Let's go to God in prayer. Remember all these requests and definitely remember the Woods family as we go to God. And ask him to touch our service tonight. God, we ask that you touch each and every request that we've brought before you. Lord, you know every need that's in this sanctuary. You know every need that is at home. You know everything that we have on our hearts, God. And we're asking, Lord, that you go into our homes and that you go into our lives and you go into our bodies. Every request that we've brought before you, we ask that you touch them, Lord. And, Lord, by the power of the blood that you shed for us on a cross, the reason for it, God, was so that we could come to you, Lord, and humbly ask you to touch every request that we have and to ask you to heal us, Lord, to ask us to deliver us, to ask you, Lord, to provide for us. And right now we come to you asking that you touch every need. And more than anything, we ask that you touch the Wood family, Lord. We ask that you give them some peace in their lives right now as they, they go through this trial, Lord. We ask that you touch their family and their church family. We ask that you touch that child that was declared brain dead, Lord, we know that you have all power, God, in your hand, and that with one word, you could speak life into that child, and you could speak healing, God, and Lord, we believe it right now that you're going to touch that family, that you're going to provide for them, and that you're going to heal and give them strength, Lord. We ask that you touch this service tonight. We ask that you provide blessings for each and every person that is here tonight. We ask that you go into each and every one of our lives, Lord. We ask that your anointing be here and your presence be here. We ask that you anoint your word. We ask that you anoint every 
song that is sung. We ask that you touch our classes that are beginning tonight. And we ask that you speak to us, God, and help us. In your name we pray and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. As we go into praise and worship tonight, I want everyone to remember that we are here to give him praise, to glorify his name. Because whatever, what other reason are we here tonight for? Are you here to watch us sing? Are you here to hear a good message? Well, you're going to hear that. But the reason why we're here is to give him praise. Because he's worthy. He's worthy of the praise. Amen. Can't stop, praising his name, I just can't stop, praising his name. 
wondered if we couldn't lift up a praise to that name. Hallelujah, Jesus. I wonder if there's anybody the adversary might have been fighting you all week. And our weapons are not carnal. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in high places. When you begin to worship, you begin to begin to knock the adversary back a little further. I wonder if there's anybody that came in here on a Wednesday night with a praise on your heart and a praise on your lips. Come on, somebody. He's worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. We worship you tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah. You can be seated if you want.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Can we just lift our hands all over this building just for a few seconds? If we couldn't just let a praise be on our lips this evening, just to a holy God who is worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, you're worthy of all praise and all honor. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Man, if you can stand, if our ushers will get ready, if we can link up with somebody that's close to you before we take this evening's offering. The spirit of Goshen, I want to ask the Lord to bless us and bless this church. Amen. If you can look at somebody and tell, tell them you're going to get a raise on your job, a bonus check, or an unexpected blessing. Tell someone, may the blessings of the Lord be upon you. And I bless you in the name of the Lord. And before we raise our hands and invoke the spirit of Goshen, I wonder if you couldn't pray for that person you're about to link up with like hell's after their soul. And I wonder if we couldn't just begin to pray more for this, more than the spirit of Goshen. Ask that the Lord have his way in this place. You don't know what somebody's week might have been like. You don't know the struggle they've walked in here with. I wonder if we invoke the spirit of Goshen this evening. If you couldn't link up with that person and begin to pray like hell itself is fighting for that individual. I wonder if one body, we couldn't just begin to pray for that person. God, we ask that you would have your way in this house, God. Touch every soul, every life. God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, as we invoke the spirit of Goshen, I ask that you would be with every individual tonight, God. Let your blessings be upon us, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we give you praise and we give you glory. Amen. As you get out your offering and the ushers come, worship with us in song as you worship and give. Wanna be close, close to your side, so heaven is real and death is a lie. I want to hear voices of angels above singing as one. Yeah. 
worship the great I am hallelujah there is none like him in all the earth hallelujah Jesus I don't know about you but I'm thankful that I know the great I am this evening no matter what need you stepped in with the great I am can take care of whatever need it might be there's nothing too hard for the Lord I said there, I wish we believed that this evening. There's nothing too hard for the Lord this evening. We serve the great I am who is still touched by the infirmities of his people. We serve a great, great God this evening. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm thankful for his presence. If you remain standing, we're going to turn this service to our bishop. I'm, I'm looking forward and I'm thankful to hear the word of the Lord this evening. I wonder if you could agree with this pulpit with an apostolic amen. Thank you, Brother Morgan. Everybody say praise the Lord. Amen. Say it again. Amen. Are you saying it with gusto? Okay. Amen. I just thought I'd ask. Uh, I've been asked to dismiss all the adults in Children's Church. Stay up here with me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sister Cheryl. Just a joke. Amen. Children, you are welcome to go right now. Sister Michelle reminded me to let the kids go to Children's Church. And uh, I'm glad to see that you're all here in the house of God that are here. And those that cannot be here, amen, it's just, uh, amen, something that they have to endure. Those that could be here and and are not here, it's something they're going to have to answer for. Amen. I don't have to answer for them. 
I don't have to uh, make any excuses for anybody, and I certainly don't want to make any for me. Praise God. You may be seated. The Lord bless you. Uh, amen. We've had a great worship service. Brother Morgan did a great job. Amen. And uh, uh, my wife asked me to sing tonight. Can you believe that? Amen. And uh, if you'd like to hear me sing tonight, say amen. amen. And uh, I don't know. I brought two or three songs down here. And uh, uh, some of them just don't fit right now. But uh, if you allow me, I'll try to sing at least one song for you. I know this. I do have a message. Pastor called me at 6 o'clock thereabouts last evening and asked me if I would do the honors tonight. And uh, I went to bed last night and was awakened in the wee hours of the morning with a message. God spoke to me three words. And I laid there for probably 45 minutes and couldn't sleep. And I got up this morning and the three words was rolling over and over in my mind. Praise God. Went out and done a few things that I was on the agenda to do. But I made up my mind I was going to quit early today and come over to the church and pray and seek the face of God. And... Uh, See what the Lord would say to me about those three words. And <clears throat> I went back home. Uh, well, I didn't come over yet. I actually went in about noon and had some lunch. My wife fixed me some lunch. And I went, got in my easy chair, my recliner, my sunroom, and that's dangerous. And uh, I asked her if she would be so kind to read to me. And... Uh, you should have seen a shock on her face. She didn't realize she showed it, but the shock on her face because I never ask her to read for me. And uh, a lot of times she has to tie me, hog tie me to read things out of magazines and church papers and, and editorials and things. And uh, <clears throat> I do well to hear all the way through if I've fallen asleep at least twice. So maybe this will come home to me and, and you'll fall asleep twice while I'm trying to read to you tonight. <laughs> Amen. Brother uh, Justin, if you will put it on, I'm going to sing, The Deal is Still On. <clears throat> Praise God. I didn't bring that one down to you. Just put on whatever you want to. I don't care. <laughs> Praise God. I think you have it, though. Outside Jerusalem As they gazed Into the sky The disciples Watched their Lord Taken away But suddenly Two men appeared With a message From the throne and said Just like he left He's coming back again And the deal's still On the deal's still on, contract still firm. It was signed in blood by the big man in the sky. Well, God's not a man that he can lie, so on his word you can rely. 
Just like he left, he's coming back again, and the deal's still on. Praise God, I'm glad it's still on. Hallelujah. They said we've heard about his coming since our fathers fell asleep. And since that time, all things remain the same. But I remember a night that I was born again. Earnest payment was made on a promised land. I shook hands with the big man. And the deal's still long, deal's still long, contract's still firm. It was signed in blood by the big man in the sky. Yeah, God's not a man that he can lie, so on his word you can rely. He's coming back right on time. He'll be back right on time. He's coming back right on time. And the deal's still on. Deal's still on. Contract's still firm. The deal is still. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm going to the book of Genesis. Is it all right? Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 22. You have your Bibles. You're welcome to journey with me there. And uh, I won't hold you long tonight. At least that's not my intention. Genesis 22 and 1, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abram, or Abraham, and said unto him, Abram, he said, uh, Behold, uh, I want to talk to you. And Abram said, Here I am. I wonder if you're here tonight. Are you listening to God? And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abram, Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went in unto the place of which God which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together, and they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. 
And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket, in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, Amen. In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. You may be seated. Amen. If I would go to the place that I want to go, I would go to verse 12. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Praise God. Amen. I want to preach tonight just for a few minutes and get your attention if I can. Amen. I want to preach on three words. Now I know. God woke me up this morning around 2.15, somewhere thereabouts, and three words rang out to me from the voice of God. And I said, God, what are you trying to tell me? And he took me to the book of Genesis and told me to read the story of Abraham and Isaac and the offering of the son of Abraham on the altar. He said, there is a message there I want to help my people with tonight, and you're going to be preaching, and I want you to preach to them these three words, now I know. I'm going to deal with your mind a little bit tonight and hope with your heart, but I'm going to talk to you. Have you ever sat in church and wondered why some people who come in the door And they get right with God, at least apparently, and it seems that they do. And they go for a little while, and suddenly you see them no more. And then you see some other people get in the church, and they seem to do well, and they go down life's road and seem like they're in church for quite a long distance, and something offsets them and, and upsets them to a point that they just toss in the towel and they don't return to the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And then you see some people that just seemingly run on like the Energizer Bunny. They just keep on going, and they just keep on staying in the house of God, loving God. Amen. And then all of a sudden there is something huge and something big, amen, that comes up that kind of makes them fall by the wayside. I want to talk to you tonight, and then there are some people that you could look at and say, and I hope I don't embarrass anybody by calling names tonight because I don't usually do that, but I pastored this church for 38 years, and uh, there is names that come to my mind, and, and one of them is Sister Mary Ethel Morafew. Some of you probably don't know her, but it's Wayne Morafew's mother. Amen. When I pastored her, I never, ever wondered if Sister Mary Ethel was going to be here on Wednesday night or Friday night or Sunday morning or Sunday night. Till she passed away, there is one word that describes her. Amen. She was faithful. Amen. I'm going to talk to you about Abraham for a little while and his son Isaac. And I want to deal with some things and and I want to talk to you about the mind of God. I I want to cross the line tonight in your mind. Amen. I I want to cross the line to a made-up mind. Amen. I want to cross the line to a made-up mind. Amen. I started December 11, 1960 with the baptism of the Holy Ghost after I was baptized in Jesus' name in the Wabash River that afternoon. God gave me the Holy Ghost that night. I made up my mind that night, and I made up my mind I was going to Go the distance. I've had trials, I've had tests, and I have had things come my way, but I have never had anything that I have ever let it shake me to the point that I said, I want to (laughs) quit. Hallelujah. Can I preach? Can I preach? Hallelujah. Amen. So God brought Abraham into such a place to exercise, amen, his faith, his love, 
and his obedience. Amen. The word tempt, it said in God tempted or tempted Abraham. And I want you to know in the original Hebrew, it doesn't mean he was tempted like that of evil because let not a man say he was tempted of God when he's drawn away from God. But here that word means God tried Abraham. Amen. God searched out Abraham's heart and mind. Amen. God got a hold of Abraham and dealt with him about something uh, and it was something that Abraham I'm sure did not understand hallelujah is it all right? amen so the word here tempted means God literally proved him God literally looked into his heart and searched it out and tried him Amen. I want to find out about this man. Because you see, I'll take you a little distance tonight if you'll let me. Uh, amen. I want to just uh, deal with the fact that in, in chapter 12 of Genesis, uh, God spoke to Abraham to separate himself from Ur of the Chaldees. Uh, amen. Leave your family behind. Uh, and I'm reminded the Bible said in the New Testament to you and I, uh, except a man be willing to forsake all. Houses, land, father, mother, sister, brother, wife, and children. He's not worthy to be called my disciple. Can I preach? Hallelujah. Except a man be willing to, it didn't say you had to, but when it comes to your family and your family says no, you say, but I got to go. Your family says, why do you want to pay your tithes? You say, amen, because it belongs to God. You don't answer. The preacher says, I got to. And now I know. Everybody say that every once in a while to yourself. Now I know. Praise God. That's what God said. The angel of the Lord said, now I know. Separated in chapter 12 from his family. Amen. Chapter number 13, if you want to take time and read it later, you can. Amen. He started off on a bad foot. He went down into Egypt. Amen. And his wife was so beautiful, amen, to look upon. He said, I'm scared that when I get to Egypt, amen, Pharaoh is going to look at you and he's going to kill me for you because you're so gorgeous. Whoo, Hallelujah. If you want to kind of lighten the load a little bit, husbands, look over your wife and say you're gorgeous. Amen. Well, that was, that was pitiful. Praise God. Amen. So he said, tell Pharaoh that you're my sister. And so here we go. Amen. The man started off separated, done well, left dad and mom behind. Well, he left all the family behind, took dad with him for a while, but he had to end up separating from dad. When God means separate, he means separate, folks. Amen. You can't take what you want to take next to the, to the next city and get by with it. <laughs> Can I preach? That means you can't take what you can't do here over someplace else in another place, amen, and think you're going to get by with it. If God speaks to you to separate yourself, you're going to have to end up separating yourself. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, God's not going to take nothing from you because he's not a thief. You're going to lay it down, praise the Lord. If I, I don't care if it's drugs, if it's alcohol, if it's, if it's nicotine, whatever it might be, you've got to be willing to lay it, lay it down. Except a man be willing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not according to what a man hath, the book says. It's according to what a man hath not. Amen. Don't, don't worry about what you don't have. Don't worry about what you do have. Just worry about what God wants you to have. Praise God. Be happy with what God wants to do for you. And so, amen, all of a sudden the king said to him, he said, hey, he said, there's a disease, a pestilence, there's something fell on my cattle, on my, all, of my, all of my animals, and he said, there's something going wrong here. He said, take your wife, amen, why did you lie to me to start with? Take your wife, everything you got, and get out of here. Praise the Lord. Now, we're talking about a man that was called. Can I preach? We're talking about a man that was called a separation. A man that the Bible said he sought for a city whose builder and maker is God. Whew, hallelujah. 
Praise God. And then in chapter number, amen, 13, hallelujah, he was promised. He said, Abram, look at the dust of the earth. And he said, your seed is going to be numbered like the dust of the earth. You can't number it. I'm going to bless you wherever you go, wherever and whatever. I'm going to bless them that blesses you. I'm going to curse them that curses you. I'm still talking to you. Genesis number, number chapter number 15, amen. He said, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. God appeared to him again. I am thy shield, thy exceeding great reward. Chapter 16, amen. They got, a little, uh, they got a little impatient. They got just a little bit on the irritable side. Amen. We haven't had a child. Wonder why God has not answered our prayer. Wonder how come things ain't going good for me. Praise God. I'm going to help you tonight if you let me. I mean, why is it? Why is it? God said he's going to bless me and blessing he's going to bless me. And how is it? Thy seed. Amen. Out of thy seed. In Isaac shall thy, thy seed be blessed. In Isaac shall thy seed be blessed. You're going to have a child. Amen. Sarah 90 and Abraham 100. And Sarah says, you don't reckon he got the thing. You know, folks, you get in trouble when you start reckoning the things and trying to figure things out. Amen. If you want to really get confused, ask yourself the question, how can a brown cow eat green grass, give white milk that makes yellow butter? And it will just come right back to you. God made it that way. And when you get to the place that you're satisfied with Jesus, and you can sing that song, I'm satisfied, I'm satisfied. He said he'd be my comforter, said he'd be my guide. Quit counting all the things you don't have and start blessing the Lord for the things you do have. Amen. Quit looking around for things that ain't going well and start looking at things that is going well. Come on, folks. Amen. They told me all my growing up life and all my pastoral time in 38 years, amen, one of these days you'll reach the golden years. They didn't tell me what was the golden years. I talked to one sister right before church. She said, there's a storm coming. How do you know? Because my feet was on fire the other day, and my, I can feel it. Amen. Brother Hustetler tells me when it's going to be a weather front coming in. He can feel it in his bones. Uh, I don't read that anywhere in this Bible. Now, come on. Don't shut up on me. I ain't picking on nobody that has those signs and wonders coming from the elements of, of the world through the bones of your body. But I'm going to tell you something. If the devil can discourage you enough to sit down and quit, he's going to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. So in Genesis 16... Sarah said, maybe, just maybe, God meant for you to have Hagar, an Egyptian slave. Now, folks, I'm on this side of Calvary. I've got all the wisdom in the world to read that book backwards, and I can't figure out why some people does what they do. Now, that didn't make any sense at all. I don't care if there wasn't any law about a man having one wife back then. I don't care. I'm just telling you. I'm talking about natural law like our laws are today. Amen. A common sense would say, Sarah, you're out of your mind. And common sense would say, Abraham... <laughs> I told you to begin with, you're going to be the father of many nations. And you come up with an IQ like that? But if you read the Bible, he must have enjoyed the thought. You got quiet on that one. At least he did what she said for him to do. And next thing you know, here's Abraham having a child by a slave. Amen. Are you listening to me? God don't want you to be hooked up with slavery, friend. You ain't supposed to be a slave to nothing. You both supposed to have been set free from the world. Free from sin. Hallelujah. We sing that a song, old song. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. Been washed in the blood of 
Jesus been born again. Chapter 17, Isaac was re-promised, re was Abraham's mind was reestablished. There's not going to be any blessing through Ishmael. Chapter 18, Abraham entertains angels. I'm just giving you a brief description, and it won't cost you nothing today to listen to it. Chapter 20, here's a man that lied again. Got into the country, the land of Gerar, or Gerar. And Abimelech came out to meet him and saw his wife Sarah. And here again, Abraham says, let's tell everybody you're my sister. You getting the picture? I know you're sitting there saying, well, what are you trying to say? Listen to me, I'm going to give it to you. Abimelech went home, sent for Sarah. That night he had a dream. God said, you're as a dead man. Abimelech jumped straight up out of the bed and said, what in the world's going on? He said, that woman belongs to that man. She's married to Abraham. So all this time coming down through the chapters and hurriedly going through the life of Abraham in a brief moment, we come to chapter 22. Now there's a lot of years in there, and you may not like what I'm going to say, and you may not agree, and if you don't agree, it's okay. I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you. I'm just going to tell you what history says, and, and I don't know. So if you know and I don't know, come and tell me, and we'll both go to the history book and see what history says, and then we'll both come back and say what we think. But down the road, God spoke to Abraham and said, Take thy son. Now, 12 through 22, or 222, he was supposed to be the beginning of a father of many nations. He was supposed to be, if I can say it, class A Christian. Supposed to be all wrapped up in the package of the divine will of God. But suddenly, here's God saying, I'm not satisfied. I got to talk to that man one more time and I'm going to ask him to do something that I don't know. Now you can, you can argue me all you want to but the book says now I know. You, 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 you theologians sitting out there help this country boy out will you? Amen. Why would God say now I know if he knew all along? Have you ever had the person sit and argue with you, amen, that don't know whether they're going to stay or go, don't know whether they're going to up or down, they don't know whether they're going to be in or out, they don't really understand what's going on in their life, so they sat and talked to you and said, can I ask you a question, amen, can I say something, Brother Carson, is it all right if I ask you, amen, does God know whether I'm going to be saved or not? Have you been asked that? Hundreds of times. Jason, <laughs> Has it gone through your mind ever? If I'm not going to be saved, what am I sitting on this seat for? You don't have to answer that. I'm going to help you tonight if you'll let me. Young men, there's some of you sitting here saying, well, hey, I, I, if I'm not going to be saved, why do I want to dress in a suit and tie? Why don't I put on my... Bermuda shorts and my tank top and cigarettes and, and, and get me a motorcycle and cruise the avenue. Does God know whether, hey amen, Trey's going to be saved or not? Now you're scared of me. You won't answer. 
Well, I submit to you that all the way from Genesis to 22 Genesis, amen, 12 to 22, God was putting him through the rigors, through the test. God was trying him. God was building him up. God was trying to help him out. But here we are in Genesis 22, and he said, now take thy son, thine only son, take the promise that I gave you, amen, and go kill it on, Mount, on, on, on the mountain of which I will tell thee of. He said, go to the land of Moriah. Amen. The land of Moriah, if you'll study it out, it's the mountains around Jerusalem and in Jerusalem. Jerusalem sits on a high hill. Amen. But if you'll read history and study a little bit, amen, Abraham offered Isaac on the same mountain, amen, that Calvary was on. And if you study your Bible, you'll see it was three days' journey for Abraham to get to the land of Moriah. And three days before the sacrificial sacrifice of that son was going to take place on Mount Moriah, amen, and then if you'll study your Bible, amen, it was three days before Jesus was crucified and perfected. And everybody knows, if you study anything at all, amen, types and shadows, Abraham was a type of God. Isaac was a type of the son of God. Are you listening to me? But here we are in the middle of a story. Amen. And Isaac and is with his dad. And I read a little bit of history today. Josephus says, the writings of Josephus, he said that Jesus, I mean, excuse me, Isaac was probably 25 years old. The rabbins or the rabbis of that day in history, they, they wrote down and they said Jesus was approximately 36. But I got in another book and said anybody ought to realize if this is types and shadows, now this will blow you out of the water because it did me. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm all this smart. I just read it said Jesus was, I mean, Isaac was 33 years old when his father took him to Mount Moriah. That means Abraham had to be 133. And that tells me, are you listening? That tells me a 33-year-old boy ought to be able to resist a 133-year-old man. No fight, no struggle. Where's the sacrifice? Abraham said, son, God himself shall provide the sacrifice. Hallelujah. Amen. So the altar was built. There had to be a lot of things going through the mind of dad. That three days journey must have been a torment. His mind must have been racing. How do I explain when I get there? Because the boy just got through saying, Dad, here's the wood, here's the fire, but where is the sacrifice? And so the boy must have had things racing through his mind. I, I believe in my dad. My dad wouldn't do anything crazy. I uh, wonder what we're going to do here. wonder what happened. And they stopped just a day's journey away and said, you, you boys, you two boys stay here. History said one of those boys was Ishmael. I and the lad's going to go yonder, and we're going to do what? Can you worship in the middle of the biggest thing God asked you to give up? Huh? Is our joys that we should be enjoying gone because we're holding on to things? I've heard the pastor preach. Now don't blame me. I'm not naming anything. I'm just telling you. I've heard pastor preach, amen, we're holding on to things. We need to go home. I've heard him say this. We need to go home and, and clean out our house. More than that, we need to go home and clean out our mind. 
I remember the day that the old time preacher used to preach. Hey, man, you, you, some of you, hey, Brother Scobie, are you here? Amen. Now I know. Brother Miller, are you here? Now I, I know. Amen. I ain't, no, there's no doubt in my, hey, in pastoring 38 years, we'd go to church on Wednesday night, and my wife would say to me, she said, where was so-and-so? Where was so-and-so? I don't know. Where was so-and-so? You know, there was a, a nucleus of people that I pastored that she never did ask me, where were they? Boy, it's quiet in here tonight. Because every time the doors was open, Gertie Thomas was on the third pew on the left-hand side of the church. Mary Ethel Morphy was on the second pew on the left-hand side out, of, out next to the wall or the third pew every night. I think we ought to have that replay of that drama now, you know, yeah, you know. <laughs> Testimony time. <laughs> Where was you at the other night? Ever since December the 11th, 1960, and you crucify me for this if you want to, but it's never been a debate whether I was going to church on church night. I can count on one hand and drop three fingers the times I miss church too sick to come. Now, I can't count on one hand dropping three fingers on the nights I was so sick I didn't feel like coming. Ooh, is it ever quiet tonight? Huh? Amen. But that's okay. It's all right. I woke up, and, and when God spoke those three words to me, and he said, you need to tell some of those folks. Well, I want my people to know this. Amen. There is a time span that, that things will be done, and things will come their way, and trials will come their way. Amen. Because I got to know. You don't have to know I don't have to know, but he said, I've got to know. Got the wood in place, the altar rebuilt, the wood in place, had the fire in the censer, getting ready, amen, to offer a sacrifice, got the knife in the air. The man holding the knife lied twice, I can prove. The man holding the knife was deceitful. One yes, sir, and three nodding her head. Huh? Praise God. The man holding the knife should have stayed home with Sarah and we wouldn't have the mess we got today. The Arabs wouldn't be fighting the Jews. Ishmael said, I ought to have the birthright. Isaac said, you can't have it. You're the son of a slave. Woo, Hallelujah. Amen. But Isaac said, no, I get it because my daddy is Abraham. My mama is Sarah, and I'm the promised child. Oh, praise the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Angel of the Lord, angel of the Lord. You want me to tell you what I believe? I believe God dispatched, amen, himself and amen, as a theophany, and I believe he stood there in heaven, and he said, Abraham, Abraham, amen, do not do that. Do not do do not take that knife and take your life, the life of your son. Amen. For now I know. Praise God. Let me give you some encouragement. Whatever you're going through, throw off that thought. If it don't work, I quit. Throw off that thought. If it don't get better, I'm out of here. 
get a hold of that that Job said, though he slay me, yet will I what? I'll trust him. I'm going to go all the way. Hallelujah. Somebody said amen. Isaac carried the wood. Jesus Christ carried the cross. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I'm not going to be much longer, but I want to help you. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17 through 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried. Everybody say tried. Offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise. Amen. Amen. Promises. Offered up his only begotten son. Verse 18 said, of whom, amen, it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Verse 19, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also, amen, he received him in a like figure. Daniel, amen, you come through the den of lions. I had to know. Amen. I had to know, for I know. Hallelujah. I'm not going to change my prayer life, folks. Amen. Daniel said, I'm going to pray three times a day like I always did. I don't care what the king has said. I'm going to stay faithful. I don't care what comes my way. Church is first in my life. Woo. Maybe you're saying, I just can't hear you. Amen. I, I, don't, know, I don't know what trial, what test is going to come my way, but I'm not going to entertain the thought that I quit. I'm not going to entertain the thought that it ain't worth it. <laughs> Amen. Can you imagine the, the joy? Can you imagine? That king loved Daniel. Amen. He didn't want to put him in the den of lions, but he made a decree, and he had to fulfill what he said he would do. So they cast him in the den of lions. Daniel said, okay, I'm not changing. I'm not changing. I'm not changing. Amen. Though he slay me, I'm not changing. Though I go to the dinner of, amen, be a dinner for the lions, I'm not changing. Amen. The next morning, the king come down toward the cat, toward the den of lions and said, hey, Daniel, is your king, is your king, is your God, is, amen. What's going on, Daniel. He heard a voice coming up out of that den of lions. Oh, long live the king. Hallelujah. Everything's all right. You know why everything's all right? Amen. Because I stuck with it. I held on. And God said, now I know. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. Praise God. Three Hebrew children. You know the story, cast in the fiery furnace, seven times hotter than it ought to be. Amen. The old king looked in the fire. His eyes got big. His heart fell. He said, did not we throw three? Can I tell you what those boys said before they put him in? Oh, king, we're not careful. Everybody say careful. I'm not careful in answering you tonight, preacher. Come sink, swim, mud, crawl, or die. I'm in this for the long haul. I'm going to be raptured. I'm going home with Jesus when he comes. <laughs> will you have trials? Yes. Will you, will you run into times when you don't know what's up and which way south and north and east and west? Yes. Amen. But whenever you go into that place where you don't know what's up, Brother Vanny, you don't know what my family's doing. You don't know what my family's putting me through. You don't know how bad I want to, you don't know how. And I think, well, what's the use? And, and the devil has told you, sir. He's told you the last few days, you might as well toss in the towel. You, you've never proved yourself to be anything at all for God in the church. You've never proved yourself to be victorious over anything comes your way. You let everything trip you up. In fact, you made several mistakes in the last two weeks. Okay? Now, I'm not going to leave you there. I'm going to tell you, get up. Now, I will tell you, there's a place in your life you're going to have to get up and stay up. Hallelujah. That scripture don't read, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy, for every time I fall. Don't give yourself a crutch. 
to go back and get your hands dirty. <laughs> Shall we continue to sin or in sin that grace may be big? Come on, you're quiet. I'm going to tell you what the book says. God forbid. 38 years of pastoring, eight years on the evangelistic field. Amen. Six, seven, seven and almost a half years being here sitting under this good pastor. Amen. Second to none in his ministry preaching and on fire for God. Got a burden for this church like you wouldn't believe. He calls me his pastor. He calls me his bishop. That's okay. And so I guess I am. That's what he says I am. Of course, some of you misunderstood what his meaning of me being bishop and me being his pastor. Some of you, every time you get an itch in your get-along and he won't scratch it, you want to come to me. Now, you don't do it now because I turned you down. I just said, go get you a fork. Amen. And he said, uh, every once in a while he checks in, he says, hey, Dad, he said, how, 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 how am I doing? I said, hey, you're doing great. No problem, son. Everything's fine. Amen. The church is almost done now and everything's good. But I said, I got, I get, I got one word of advice for you. Of course, he's got a good schoolmaster. He's seen me do it in all them years. But I said, I'll tell you what you don't do. You don't take the burden of the people in the church and lighten their load by paying all the finances of the church out of your pocket. Now, he ain't here and he can't stop me. He can jerk my coattail when he gets home, but it's too late. I didn't said it. I said, I don't want to ever see your, your family suffering or you doing without going and 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 and. and Hallelujah. And I know his burden is he just don't want to overtax you guys. But you see, if you guys, now you're going to, I'm going to tell on myself, and, and I know I'm going to hit the dirt with some of you, but sometime back, this, we was over in the old building, sometime back, there was somebody that was going around, good, good deed, no problem, good deed, is going around, somebody had hit a dip and had a hard time, and, and, and they, and they, uh, they was needing some help. And a good brother, good brother, wonderful brother in this church went around and, and was taking up money for this person, uh, this family, this particular family. And, and judge me if you want to. It's okay. I can take it. And uh, they come to, you know, to, uh, it got close to me. And, and, and they said, you know, we're taking up money. And I said, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll get back with you. My first endeavor was I went straight to my pastor. And I said to my pastor, is this brother paying his tithes? Now, I don't normally ask, and I, it's none of my business, and I don't really care. But I cover my backside as well as my front side. And I said, is this brother paying? Any? Now, don't you do this. I did this as a bishop. I said, is this brother paying his tithes? And my son just kind of dropped his head. He didn't have to answer. I knew. I already knew he didn't. I named him right then. I won't say how many, but I named him right then who was and who wasn't. No, I'm nothing big, little, small, or great. I didn't say nothing to the pastor, didn't say nothing to nobody, but when they come around for the offering, I didn't give in it. You know why? Somebody's snoring over there, I can hear him. <laughs> so I don't agree with you, preacher. I didn't ask you to. But I didn't give in it because I'm not going to give in to something that if God's got them in the position he's got them in, amen, so that they will holler, uncle. Then if I come to the rescue with my, with my pocket and my billfo and I help out, then I'm getting in the way of God's divine will. Because that book teaches, <laughs> if you want the bottom to drop out, you start robbing from God. Preach, Brother Van Lu. 
Hey, I'm not going to change, folks. I, you get quiet as you want to. Hey, Amen. I've preached this ever since I've been in the church, ever since I've been called to preach. I'm going to tell you right now, you ain't tithing, you're hell bound. And some of you won't amen that because you don't believe that. And if you don't believe that, you don't belong here. Go ask your pastor if he don't believe that. I got a John Deere tractor, but I don't have to back it up and hook my chain to you. Amen. I don't have to ask you for permission. I'm telling you right now, the man that will rob from God is a thief and he can't be saved. You might want to drink that Coke tonight, that Diet Right Cola system. I had some just before I come to church. It might affect you the same way. Hallelujah. And by the way, if you don't believe me, I'll tell you this. I ask the pastor when I preach because some people has talked to me about my ministry, and that's okay. I took it. No problem. I'm going to do my best to shape up and do what's right. But I ask my pastor to critique my messages. And if he finds something that he doesn't like, come to me and talk to me about it. Because he is the pastor. I thought you'd amen that one. <clears throat> amen. Peter. Lovest thou me more than these? Yes, Lord. Feed my sheep. First he said, feed my lamb. Second said, feed my sheep. Third he said, feed my sheep. Amen. Then he said to Peter, he said, Peter, Satan's desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat, but I prayed for you that your faith fail thee not. And when thou art converted, I don't know right now, Peter. You're having a hard time with that, folks. I did too when God woke me up and talked to me about it because I said, God, you know everything. He said, no, you're wrong, preacher. He said, as man, there's a lot of things I didn't know. As God, there's a whole lot of things that Man doesn't know that I know. But me being God, he said, I give every man a chance. And he said, there is a period of time in every man's life that I wait on them. And they got to make the decision whether they're going to be saved or not. I leave it up to them. Some don't pass the test and they flunk out. Some sit beside the others and they call themselves friends of the same one that didn't make it and they made it. Do you know why? I said, tell me, God, why? He said, because it has to be an individual purpose in their mind. I'm going to make it. I'm not going to quit. For now I know. Peter, Satan wants you. I prayed for you. That your faith fail thee not. And when thou art what? You know what he said? When you really get saved. Strengthen your brethren. Hallelujah. Went to Peter and the disciples. He was teaching one day in St. John. He was teaching, except you eat my body, drink my blood, you have no life in you. And the Bible said many of his disciples that heard him teach this way said this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Then on down in the 66th verse of that same chapter, it said, Amen. And many of his disciples walked no more with him. And then Jesus, stopping, turning to the twelve, said, Will you go away?
Can I ask you a question? Why didn't he say, I know you guys won't leave? But he had already said, one of you is a devil. How many of the 12 is going to stay with you, Lord? I don't know right now because I asked him if they was going to leave. And Peter said, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. So at 33 years of age, Isaac laid down on the altar, willingly put his hands up for being bound, willingly let his dad take the knife and put it up in the air. And then's when he found out about himself. God said, now I know. I close with these words. Your struggles might be over when you make up your mind. I'm putting God and my church and my soul first in everything. Then God may say, now I know. There's a ram caught in a thicket back here. Your healing is right back here. It's been waiting on you, but you've been missing too much church for too little reason. Your Goshen blessing is right back here. When I see that you've made up your mind that you're going to put me and my church, and the kingdom of God first. Will you stand? I heard an old, old story How the Savior came from glory how he shed his blood on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his moaning and his precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me, and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath that cleansing blood. When Chris... Came up here from Alabama. Nobody knew Chris. While the shock of all shocks, you people didn't realize and didn't know Chris well enough that you mean Ali's going to marry that guy? <laughs> I love you, Brother Chris. Walked to this pulpit Sunday. Opened up that book and sang. I have never asked him. It sounds like he has a trained voice. He went to school for it. God blessed, blessed him in singing that song. Is Chris going to stay? We said. Is Chris going to make? Is Chris going to? And every time you ask that question, you come up dumbfounded because only Chris knows. But so far, so far, I hear the voice of God say, for now I know. My wife said to me, just a minute, brother. 
My wife said to me when Brother Mike and, and Brother Les prayed through the other night, way back, a few weeks back, I'm going to tell her. My wife said to me, she said, uh, you don't act like you're real excited about some of these new folks that's come back to God. I said, baby, I'm excited. She said, you don't act it? I said, well, talk to me three months from now. Hey, y'all, <laughs> I should have quit just a minute ago because I just, I just heard the pumpkin hit the floor. No, no, no. I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm, I'm you know, I, it's fine. I, I want them to stay. I want them to stick. I want them to make it. I want everything to be right. And Les just asked me for prayer the other night for his family situation, and I've been praying for him. I've been asking God to turn minds around. I've been asking God to do things and, and do things and do things. But whatever it does come about, he's got to make up his mind. And somewhere down the road, he's got to hear God say, For now, I know. Brother Chris, you had your hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were going to tell me Allie wasn't sure about you either. <laughs> I'm glad he's here. Every once in a while when I pastored, I'd slip around to people, Mary Ethel, Sister Thomas, Denatus Smith, Charles Smith. Every once in a while I hear some music, and, and I love good music. And I hear them ivories being tickled by somebody and riding down the road, and I say, there's Sister Smith. And I start bawling. I remember those days. And you know what, folks? Let me say this. Your pastor depends on you being here. And when you're not here, his heart hurts. Oh, he don't miss just one person. I'll promise you he could tell you Tonight, who's not here if he was sitting behind me? He can go home and tell his lovely wife, wonder where so-and-so is at. God bless you. Hope you enjoyed something said. And if you didn't, blame it on your pastor. He asked me. Amen. Good night. Shake hands with somebody on the way out and say, for now I know. You're going to be here.